Quill is a platform for designing and deploying databases for data-intensive dApps and protocols. I don't know if I would characterize Quill as solving a problem as much as it is more opening up new opportunities. Right now in Web3 for infrastructure and for building decentralized applications, you have smart contract platforms like Ethereum, like Solana, where you can define custom business logic for your application, deploy it, and now people can just interact with that permissionlessly. And then you also have protocols like Arweave and Filecoin, where you can deploy data intensive applications that contain a very large amount of data, but don't necessarily contain the same like rigid rules that a smart contract has. And so Quill is sort of bringing both of those two into one platform where you can have the permissionless functionality of a smart contract and the data intensive functionality of something like Arweave or Filecoin and we're bringing that together with existing database engines. So now you can build all these applications and you can do it with the same data stores, you know, SQL databases, graph databases, key value stores that you've been using for your entire developer career, but at the same time is containing all this new functionality that's provided by Web3. The main warrant for Quill is in acting as an infrastructure layer for some of the newer sectors of Web3. Prior to about 18 months ago, Web3 was almost entirely synonymous with DeFi. You know, every major application in Web3 or almost every major application was a DeFi application. But in the last 18 months, we really see Web3 grow beyond DeFi into decentralized social and decentralized gaming, decentralized science, decentralized analytics. And all of these new verticals require complex and data intensive architecture to build permissionless applications on. With Quill, while we do have a couple DeFi projects that we are working with, a lot of where we're seeing traction right now are in some of these newer sectors where there just aren't any infrastructure solutions that are solving their issues. And we are now coming in and being the first player that can really handle this at scale in a permissionless environment. So there are really two parts to the Quill business model. So there is the you know typical blockchain architecture, you know blockchain price structure of Quill. But then there's also a SaaS side. Sort of starting with the typical blockchain architecture. That is, you know, when you're writing data, um, when you're interacting with databases deployed on the network, it costs you some amount of money. Right now, what we have built is a system where you can pay in with uh, currencies from other chains. For example, in our MVP that's live right now, the most common way people pay for it is with USDC on Polygon. So in this, it's not necessarily a native token based way of paying in, but you can pay in with existing tokens that then get distributed to validators on the network. So that's sort of like the, the blockchain business model for writing data to Quill, but for reading data or for like very, very high volume enterprise players, we also have SaaS offerings. So this, it's a typical invoicing system, a lot like a cloud provider. And so I think the best way to really draw similarities to existing business models here is the writing data side of things. That's like Ethereum or or Polygon or Solana or really any blockchain where you're paying to write data, but then you have gateways and service providers for reading that data from those blockchains. That's like an Infura or Alchemy or Morales. And over time, we do hope to decentralize these. And we actually already do have some partners that are working to provide uh, like decentralized and trustless access to this data. This is sort of like the business model we see ourselves taking right now, as well as some more specific SaaS offerings for larger enterprise players. So the Quill technology, it's a really cool mix of you know existing Web2 technologies, but then also incorporating uh, some of the newer things that we've seen grow really only in Web3. So starting with the Web2 technologies, uh, Quill does run with out-of-the-box database engines. So right now supporting Postgres, but then also moving to add support for other types of database engines in the near future. We also use Apache Kafka for our event sourcing. So this is more on like the traditional Web2 data architecture side of things. But then on the Web3 side of things, we are building a BFT protocol around it where the nodes they're orchestrated via tokens that are locked up in a smart contract and distributed once they perform their jobs properly. For what we are providing to our customer and what's really innovative about our solution is that it allows you to take an existing database schema. So, you know, maybe you have five tables, you deploy those to Quill, and then you can define parameterized queries for those. So essentially functions that indicate some sort of insert, update, or delete statement, you can deploy those as well and then deploy business logic for interacting with those. And now you have your SQL database, but it's entirely permissionless now. And so we've created our own DDL language that is SQL-like for defining these data structures. It's based on SQL and it transpiles to SQL, but the entire point of it is that it makes it much, much easier to define and deploy permissionless data structures. And so this makes it really, really easy for developers to come on, begin using Quill, and to make a complex, yet you know, very robust application very, very quickly. 
The community is a really important tool for building new tools, you know, new developer tools um, and new applications around Quill, but also getting feedback on the Quill protocol to make sure that, you know, we have a clear direction on where we're going. And, you know, if we need to change our direction, they let us know how we change that direction. And we've actually already seen this. And the community is largely why we did end up pivoting from a social project to Quill, which was the infrastructure for that social project. You know, at Quill, we're really trying to emphasize a developer community, getting deeply technical, passionate, and just really smart uh, developers into our community, helping us to, you know, build the product, but more importantly, build the things surrounding the product and really uh, building the ecosystem. I think uh, I have a somewhat unpopular take in the case of crypto governance, or at least it was certainly an unpopular take six or eight months ago. I generally believe that crypto projects should have no governance, or if they do need to have governance, it should be heavily, heavily limited, especially Quill. It's supposed to act as a protocol, you know, just in the same way that HTTP is a protocol. It should be something that generally does not change. Maybe it has upgrades, maybe it has changes that, you know, get rolled out, but there shouldn't be some governing body that's making changes on a, you know, month to month basis on this protocol, because that's not a protocol. That is just a software, you know, SaaS product that you pay for with a crypto token. What people typically mean when they think of like, you know, governance, like a DAO governance. I think that's where you see protocols and projects have a severe misuse of, uh, you know, consumer trust. We are trying to really remove that and really just trying to have Quill be, be a protocol that generally does not change too much and people can plug into reliably knowing that even if, you know, 60, 70% of people want, you know, something to occur, it will still continue functioning in the exact same way as before. Right now, the Quill protocol does not have a token. Uh, this is something that we talk about quite a bit internally, um, but we haven't made decisions on and we likely won't make decisions for quite a while. You know, generally, our team's view of the token is that it should serve to uh, you know, serve the product. I think too often we see crypto projects where the product is serving the price of the token, when in reality, the token should be serving the product. But right now, we have Quill. It stores data. It has all these different functions that you know, it can perform. And if a token meant it could perform more functions or it could do its job better or it could do it more securely, then we would add a token. But for the time being, with the current payment methods and incentives we have for the network, uh, we do not immediately need a token. And so we don't have plans to launch one right now, um, but we are seriously considering it in the uh, you know, medium to far term future. Right now, Quill is a five person team. We are hiring right now and we have a couple of pretty awesome candidates in the pipeline. So I think we're probably looking at making it a six person team in the next one to two months. The team, it's a mix of younger people like myself or the two co-founders that live with me, but then also a bit more seasoned and a bit more you know, experienced industry professionals. So I guess, you know, starting with myself, I'm the founder of studying mechanical engineering. Then the two co-founders, one of them is Luis. So he's a friend from college. He has experience working in business development at database companies. Second on the other side is Luke. He's my older brother. He's been helping with everything, operations, legal, accounting, HR related. The other two team members, so our CTO, Randall, he previously has founded two startups that both got acquired. And then he spent 14 years working as a VP of SaaS and platform as a service at Oracle. You know, he's been really awesome building out a lot of the really deeply technical parts of our stack. And then our other team member, Jason Hire, his name's Brian, very talented microservice developer, as well as has a lot of experience building parsers. Quill has quite a few backers. We have top VCs as well as projects or is that are um, either using Quill right now or seriously interested in using Quill in the future. The round was co-led by FTX and Blockchain. We also had uh, Amplify Partners, DCG, Alley Corp as well. And we chose 7X for two reasons. We saw 7X as Web3 oriented that was also hungry enough to like help us day in and day out, no matter what it was. If it is marketing, if it's finding new projects, if it's designing our token. When we've looked at tokenomics, 7X has so so far been the most helpful VC um, for that. The second reason why we chose to partner with 7X is because of their really, really strong connection in Asia. They have uh, tons of connections to Asian projects, Asian VCs, Asian incubators. I um, mean, this has actually also been really, really helpful for us so far. Um, a lot of our really awesome either partners right now or partners that we are you know, sort of in like an integration phase with were brought to us by 7X. We're really happy to have them on board.